Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. This story is about a cat named Lucy, who loves to read more than anything else. Her father is worried about her and wants her to get outside and play and make friends. But Lucy prefers to stay inside because she is not the same as all the other cats. Lucy hides in her room until her father says she needs to go with him the next day to the cream shop. Lucy gets up and goes, but she's not very happy about it. Lucy and her stubby tail. Lucy was sitting in her library on a hot, sunny summer day, doing what she always did, reading. Lucy loved to read more than anything in the world. Didn't matter what kind of story it was, mystery, science fiction, fantasy, fairy tales, almost anything at all. Lucy loved to read so much that she would often forget to eat or go to bed if her father didn't remind her. Lucy was a tabby mix and lived with her father, a great big Maine cat, in a large house in a tree-lined neighborhood full of all kinds of other animals her age. Her world was a magical one, where all the animals lived in almost perfect harmony. Her father came in to check on her as he always did. He worked just across the street in a small neighborhood milk and cream shop. And in the summer when school was out, he was able to pop over to see her frequently. Lucy, it's a beautiful day outside, and many of the kids are outside playing games and getting some exercise, her father said. Her father walked to the window, opened the drapes, and looked outside. I see Lulu, the Labrador, Jenny, the cat, and Elsa, the mouse from your school. Why not go outside and play? Chase the dog or play ball or whatever games you young kids play today. I see lots of cats outside your age you may not know. Go make some friends. Get some fresh air. It's so stuffy in here, he said as he opened the windows to let in some fresh air. But Dad, I'm just getting to the best part of the story. The tiger is just about to reveal to the Monkey King where all the hidden treasure is located that was stolen by his cousin's friend. I'll go outside once I finish this part, Lucy said with a tone that indicated the importance of what she was reading. Her father looked at her with a doubtful look on his face. I will, Daddy, really, I will. Just three more pages and I will go outside. Really? Okay, Lucy. I'll be at the milk shop if you need anything. We got a new shipment of cream today that all the cats seem to love. Remember. Lucy didn't actually hear what her father said at this point as she was once again lost in her book. When she was reading, the world outside her story ceased to exist. Her father could be standing right beside her talking to her, and she wouldn't hear a word he said until he took her book away. Two hours later, she took a break to relax her eyes and looked outside and saw that some cats from school were playing on the sidewalk. 
Lucy loved books. But what she didn't tell her father was that while she often wanted to go outside to play, she didn't go because she always felt self-conscious of how the other kids looked at her. She looked different from the others. While her father and most cats she knew had a tall, bushy tail, hers was short and stubby. The kids weren't mean to her. Few other than that awful Chihuahua Gerald ever bullied anyone. But they would look, sometimes stare, and a number of them would ask questions. This bothered her enough that she largely kept to herself and kept herself company by getting lost in books. For Lucy... Being different from others felt like a great burden. Her father called her down for dinner, a stinky favorite, sea herring from Sweden. I see you forgot to go outside again today, even though you promised, her father said with a bit of exasperation in his voice. But, Dad, I love to read. I love that you read so much. I bought all the books that cover every inch of your library for you, after all. But you need to get outside and be with other cats your age. Not just stay inside that stuffy room all day long. It's important to interact with real animals not just the characters in your stories. Dad, you just don't understand, Lucy said quietly. I do understand. That's why tomorrow I want you to come to the cream shop. I have a new employee I want you to meet. That got Lucy's attention. Dad! It's too distracting over there. I won't be able to read. I promise I will go outside, she said with her usual sense of drama. No, no negotiating this time. Tomorrow, right after we eat breakfast, we will head across the street together. It will be fun. Lucy wasn't so convinced. The interior of the milk and cream shop was similar to many that opened across the city. A warm, comfortable atmosphere with places for animals of all sizes to sit, enjoy a drink, and talk. Lucy's father opened this shop a few years ago so that he could spend more time with her. Her father, at Lucy's suggestion, had included a wall at the back full of books for those animals that, like her, might not want to come to meet and talk, but simply enjoy some quiet time reading. This is where Lucy was hiding after her father practically dragged her over here. Already there were far too many people coming and going, and Lucy was thankful they didn't notice her. Lucy sat with her cup of heavy buttercream and was so absorbed in her book that she didn't notice her father came over to say hello. Lucy, I would like you to meet Archibald. He is going to be working here a few times a week while he goes to college. Hi, Lucy. Nice to meet you. You can call me Archie. Lucy reluctantly looked up. Archie was a chartreuse with a lovely blue-gray coat and charming copper-colored eyes. Lucy, Archibald has started studying the history of literature, so I thought you two might have something in common to chat about, her father continued. Okay, 
Lucy said, as more of an acceptance of the inevitable than an agreement. Archibald, why don't you take a break and then you and Lucy can have a chat? Is what you are reading the version with the Monkey King, the Tiger, and the Mouse? I recently read this book and loved it, Archie asked as he took a seat next to Lucy. You've read it? I haven't heard of many people liking this series. I think some people think it's a bit childish, Lucy said with a look of surprise. Maybe, but I love it. It's like a daytime soap opera but set in ancient times with exaggerated characters. I find it very entertaining. As they were chatting, Lucy noticed something different about Archie's paws. They were very big, bigger than any paws she had ever seen, except for some of the dogs she knew from school. She couldn't help but stare. Lucy, Archie said as he was clearing his throat to get her attention. Lucy then knew that she had been caught staring at his paws, and she turned 12 different shades of red. Yes, uh, sorry, what were you saying? She stumbled. Lucy, sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you, and I don't mind you staring at my big paws. I was born with six toes which means I have much bigger paws than most cats. Lots of other animals are curious about my paws, which is okay. And that doesn't bother you? Lucy asked. No, not at all, Archie said. Well, maybe initially, but I've come to accept myself as I am and other animals as they are. Each animal is different, and their uniqueness is what makes that animal special. If we all looked the same, this world would be an extremely boring place, don't you think? I guess so, Lucy said quietly. Archie continued, and besides, with these extra toes, I can climb better and play certain sports better. And because I am open to people asking me questions, I get to make more new friends, like you, than I might otherwise. I never thought of it that way. Your father talks about you nonstop when I am here at the shop, Archie chuckled. He talks about your love of reading, your ability to finish such long books, and, well, the frustration he feels with you staying inside all the time and avoiding other animals your age, just because you look different. Lucy was a bit shocked. He knows? I think he knows more than you might realize, Archie replied. I think he wants you to be proud of who you are, but maybe doesn't know quite how to say it in a way that you would accept. I think you should try to be more confident and to accept yourself as you are. If you do, I think you will find that other people will accept you too. As they were chatting, a number of customers came in to order some drinks to take away. I should get back to work as we are getting busy. Think about what I shared and we can talk more next time when it's not so busy. Archie said as he walked to the counter to take a large Mastiff's order. Lucy sat sipping her cream for a while, thinking about what her new friend Archibald had told her. After a while, she finished her drink, took a great big breath, and went outside to play with the other kids on the street. And that is the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight.